right, all right, all right. Says we are live. Let's check it out. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Much love to the chat. Those of y'all that's in the building early. Smash the like button as you come on in. Smash the like button as you come on in. We're going to talk a little boxing in the AM. Share the video. Spread the word to the ends of the earth. 78 Sports TV is live. You dig. <clears throat> Hope everybody had a good weekend. Enjoyed yourself and your families. I did. Had a real good weekend, man. Um, Stress-free weekend, you know. Even though weirdos are sending me messages trying to, you know, trying to disturb my peace, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it don't work with me. But they be trying. But um, you had a good family night. I cooked for the family. I cooked a, a, a young roast. I was going to cook this big uh, porterhouse steak I had. But, but I went to the store to get some cheese for the macaroni and cheese and to get a pan and some vegetables for the, uh, for the roast. I saw this uh, Wagyu roast up there in the deli, in the meat section. So I'm like, wait a minute. And it was looking so beautiful. I should have took a picture of it um, before I seasoned it. I think I did take a picture of it before I seasoned it, matter of fact. So you can see the marbleization. It was so, man, that steak was so marbled up, man. All them white lines going through it. That shit was so tender. I cooked it for about uh, five and a half hours on 350. About maybe about five and a half, six hours on 350. And um, the vegetables came out good. Uh, you know, I messed up the. Uh, I mean, the potatoes came out wonderful, but the. Uh, I think I messed up with the broccoli. I should have added the broccoli a little later because uh, the broccoli was too mushy. It was too mushy. But the, the steak itself, forget about it, man. That that shit was like fucking butter, bro. You take a fork, peel into that motherfucker, that shit was just coming off like just beautiful. My kids loved it and shit. You know what I'm saying? My son came over. He got him a little something of it. It was beautiful. And, of course, the macaroni and cheese was bomb. You know how I do, you know. You know what I'm saying? Put that put that shit on there. You know what I'm saying? Look at this girl calling me. I can't talk to her right now, though. Uh, she cool with so she, she she good people. I just can't talk to her right now because every time she calls, she needs something. She need a ride. She need a something. You know, I ain't got time for all that shit right now today. Let me see here. What's happening with it, brother Paul Carrick in the super chat showing love, much love, much appreciation, family. Uh, he says I gotta go get uh, food. Everything you post. Uh, food. He said every time you post a food pic, <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, that's how we do. That's how we do, brother. That's how we do. Let me scroll up, see what we got in the building thus far. We got, um, y'all must have forgot Young Mustafa in the building. South Park Boxer 77, Demond Kennedy, Black Attack, my brother, main event Mark up in here. Happy birthday again, main event. King Strict in the building. Hey, ain't it today Drew Titan birthday? It's somebody's birthday today. I had it in my in my cerebellum. It's somebody's birthday today. I kept that stored. I think it's Drew Titan. Frank from the land. What's happening with it? Malik, JC, Miami Snoopy 305 in the building. Ashanti L. Uh Lewis Hinton. Akondo uh Sami Hassan, my brother. Akondo LDBC or nothing in this motherfucker, you dig. Salute to uh uh the lovely brown sugar Tay Tay in the building. What's up, Tay Tay? Um, yeah, I was actually talking to Tay Tay when I was going to get them cheeses, uh, cooking and shit. You know, so if you y'all on my Instagram, <clears throat> look at my posts and slide, slide uh, the photos and shit, so you can see the videos I got of the, some cheeses. And that wasn't even all the cheeses they had in the store. You know what I'm saying? I just the, the store people wouldn't let me record. They saw me walking around with the camera. You know how white folks is, and oh, this big black guy's trying to record my butt. You know that type of shit. So whatever. But I recorded as much cheese as I could record in the store. But, man, we got so much variety of cheeses out here in Wisconsin, bro. Especially if you go to the right spots like Syndix. If, if you're going to make some macaroni and cheese, go to, if you're going to make a three-cheese mac and cheese, you can go pretty much anywhere. You know, if I, if I go with my standard three-cheese mac and cheese, you know, I can go anywhere and get the cheese. But if I'm making a six-cheese, I want to go to Syndix because they got fresh, locally- uh, made cheeses, 
and um, fresh dairy products and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so, and you got more variety. So, of course, when I'm making my mac and cheese, I'm going to do you a favor and I'm going to tell you where I put in my mac and cheese. <clears throat> uh, I ain't going to tell you everything, but I'm going to tell you some, the basis. Just so it can help y'all out, y'all can make some and do a trial run. It ain't gonna taste just like mine, cause you don't know how much cheese to put in, how much of each cheese to put in. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I use the cheeses. When I make my six cheese mac and cheese, you need sharp cheddar, okay? So you need fresh sharp cheddar. All right. <clears throat> now it's always better if you buy it on a brick. If you buy a brick and shred it yourself, if you got time to do that, um, if you ain't got time to do that, if you want to just rush through, it don't matter, you know, but it, it's going to taste slightly better if it's a fresh brick, a sharp cheddar, you shred it yourself, right? Then <clears throat> you get, so I ain't going to tell you how much now, y'all going to have to experiment on your own, All right? So sharp cheddar, you're going to need Kobe cheese, pure Kobe cheese, not Kobe Jack, not Kobe such and such, Kobe cheese. You understand? Now, that's a cheese that is hard to find outside of Wisconsin. Because trust me, when I go other places, I'll be looking for Kobe, can't find the shit. You know what I'm saying? But Kobe cheese is the absolute truth of roof. You ain't had no grilled cheese sandwich until you use Kobe cheese. Trust me. The tang, the sharpness, the bitterness, the it's, it's like a, it's just a different, it put a different level of funk on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So pure Kobe, right? You want to shred a block of that and shred some of that up, right? Then you want to get um, Kobe Jack, okay? Now, you want to get the Kobe Jack mix, all right? You can use the shredded mix or you can use the brick and shred it yourself, okay? You want to also get some mozzarella, okay? Mozzarella cheese, um provides a nice stretch. It's not going to give you much flavor, but it's going to provide a nice texture to the mac and cheese. It's going to give it that stretch. When you put the fork in and pull up, you want that, that pull with the mozzarella, right? So you want to get that, right? Then you can add in, if you want, you can add in um, some Asiago. You can add in some uh, Parmesan if you want. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I tend to mix mine up. I, I, the, the six cheese, I, I, I always mix it up. Sometimes I use provolone. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I throw in some provolone instead of mozzarella. You know what I'm saying? But the base for my mac and cheese is always sharp cheddar, Kobe, and uh, 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 mozzarella pretty much. You know what I'm saying? I use those. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I, I mix it up and do other things. But, you know, then you need you some um, – um, this is just to make the sauce now, okay? It's just to make the sauce. Then you're going to need you some regular cheddar, all right? Uh, you can be, it can be mild cheddar or it can be Wisconsin. I, I particularly use Wisconsin cheddar, okay? It's called Wisconsin cheddar. I use that. So you want to smash the like button too. You got over 200 likes in the building. I'm giving you out free game here on the mac and cheese. I'm tired of people asking me about how to make it, so I'm going to tell you niggas how to make it. I'm not gonna give you the actual recipe. You got to figure the, the the ingredients out on your own as far as the measurements. Now, you get you some um, heavy whipping cream, right? You want to pour some of that up in there. Uh, you want to get you a stick of butter, actual butter. It's best if it's actual butter. If you want my shit, some people use margarine. Some people use vegetable oil. All that. I use butter, right? Animal fat butter. Get you a stick of butter, let that melt in the non-stick uh, pan after you can cook the noodles to al dente. You don't want the noodles to be done too much. You want them just to have a little bite on them. And you want to take them noodles out once you're done cooking them and pour them in the pan. Right? Pour them in your uh, pan, a pan that's already been buttered up, lathered up, you know what I'm saying, to be not, become non-stick. So you pour your noodles after you drain them, of course. You put your noodles in the pan and you let them sit there and cool. Right. Then you start on your cheese sauce, right? So you try start on your cheese sauce and you put uh, <clears throat> a stick of butter in there, you let that melt, 
And then I do a step right here and I season my shit. I season my 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 butter. I ain't gonna tell you how I season it, but that's just my shit. I season my butter with different spices and herbs and whatnot. <clears throat> of course, salt, you know. Then I put in some uh young um um heavy whipping cream and some of the cheese that I shredded. <clears throat> and you let that melt down real slowly. You don't want to burn it too fast. And, and you gotta make sure you're doing this in a non stick uh uh, uh, pot. So you, you stir it, get you a wooden spoon, and you just stir that motherfucker and just, you know, let it get down there, right? <clears throat> so once you add that heavy whipping cream, you know, it's going to start turning into a, you know, a more liquidy. You know what I'm saying? So now, uh, depending on how you like your shit, you can add more cheese to it. Um, and then it's another ingredient. Okay? Another ingredient. I shouldn't even be telling y'all this shit, but I'm going to tell you. You take two tablespoons, nothing more, just two tablespoons of sweet and condensed milk from the can. Right? Now, you know that that shit's sweet. It tastes like uh, caramel. You put two tablespoons of that in there in your, uh, in your sauce. So you stir that motherfucker up. You let it get, you know, you want to throw the rest of that sweet and condensed milk away or use it for something else. You know what I'm saying? But don't don't ever put the whole can in there. Just two tablespoons. So you stir it like coffee. You know what I'm saying? You stir it like coffee. You know, just let it let it. You know, and it, it depends on the thickness. You don't want it to be too runny, but you don't want it to be too thick. So you want it to be just right, and that's gonna come with experience. That comes with timing and just just you know trial and error, right? So once you got your cheeses in there how you want it, um, you know, you turn the stove off the eye off and let that just sit for a second. You grab your three eggs, you scramble them up in a bowl, right? And then you take that and you pour it over the mac and cheese. Oh, excuse me, the macaroni noodles. It's already waiting over there, cooled off. And then you take your hands or you take a spoon and you make sure all of the macaroni noodles are covered in this cheese, I mean, in this uh, 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 egg yolk. Because the reason why you need the egg is because the egg is gonna hold everything together and give it that nice brick feel, you know what I'm saying? Once you uh once it comes in contact with the cheese. So now you take the cheese off very quickly, you pour that over your noodles, and then you stir it like coffee. You know, you, you gotta flip it all up, up in there, get that, make sure all the noodles are covered with that cheese sauce. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? And once all the noodles are covered with the cheese sauce, right? Um, that's when you take sharp cheddar and add it to the top of your uh, macaroni and cheese. Now, <clears throat> there's other steps, but I'm not going to tell you that because I don't want y'all shit tasting like mine. There's some crucial other steps, elements in this. I left out other shit too. And I left out a lot of stuff, but y'all try that, experiment with it, and see how you like it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But it's going to be other things you, know, you got to do that I kept out because I got to keep some stuff to myself. You dig? But salute to everybody in the building. Let me get down here and read these super chats. Let's see what we got here. And then you just put it in the oven and you bake that motherfucker for uh for a minute until until it becomes um nice on top where, where you you gotta experiment, you know. I ain't gonna tell you how long to make it, because I don't know how good y'all ovens work, but I usually cook my shit on 400 degrees, you know what I'm saying, in the oven, and then warm it up until the top look how I like it. Then I'll take a little fork and go up in there and see, make sure the cheese on the inside is how I want it. You know what I mean? But it's, it's you know, like I said, I left out a few things on purpose. Raider time in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. Says salute to the general in the chat. He said it's Red B-Day. Yeah, Cadillac Red birthday. That's right. I know I kept it in my cerebellum. Happy birthday to my brother, Cadillac Red, up in this here joint, man. Yeah, I got to text my brother. One up films in the super chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, family. Salute to you. Coming through, showing love. All right. Let's get down to the smoke. Uh D Block Express, what's happening with it? He said seasoned butter. I never thought about that. Yeah, this it's, it's little things, uh, you know, 
It's little things, you know. Little things like that that's going to take you to the top, you know. See, motherfuckers don't never think about seasoning the butter, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you got you got you got to season that sauce, man. And, and and what you season it with is going to make all the difference. It's still going to be it's going it's hard to fuck up the recipe I gave you. It's hard to fuck it up. But crucial things you you put in there is going to add that smoke to it. You're going to be like, God damn, this shit here, this, that fire. You know what I'm saying? Trust me. What's up, uh, Dr. Mark? My brother, I am Trill Will, Soul Power, a.k.a. Gamed Up Kennels. What's happening with it? My brother, Paul Carey, back in the Super Chat. What's happening with it, fam? He says, I'm putting 78's recipe in, in stories in stories by uh, Patty LaBelle Pie. That's some bullshit. See how y'all do me? See how y'all do me? That's how y'all do me. What's up, Shade Girl? Shade Girl probably mad that I'm telling y'all the game. See? I knew it. Shade Girl mad. Yeah, I, I know I ain't had to tell them that shit, but, you know, they ain't going to be able to do it right anyway. But I just hate to see people make macaroni and cheese and don't know what they're doing. And then it, it just, it just you know, because if I'm going to eat somebody macaroni and cheese, I want them to know how to make it. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Stormy B, man? What's happening with it? Y'all hold on while I blade. My brother, LDBC or nothing, Oak Park Boxing. What's happening with it, homie? Oh, I forgot to uh, talk to Black, too, bro. I'm, I got you today. I'm going to talk to him. My bad. Ratchet says 91. What's happening? CB Sports TV, brother Carl Burrell. Salute to everybody in the building. I see my brother Joe Townsend here earlier, about talking about that mac and cheese. Salute to my brother Joe. But yeah, that's the move, though. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you exactly how to make it because I'll be violating the family recipes and shit. But that's basically the gist of it. That's the base. Now you do other things to put the extra funk on it. You know what I'm saying? Put that, put that, put that stank on you on it. You know what I'm saying? But it's going down. Jay Grant Jr. say 78 trying to leave certain shit out. Oh, of course, got to. Got to leave certain shit out, bro. Can't give you the whole, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, my mama uh, beat the shit out of me, <clears throat> telling y'all everything. But I, I gave y'all a lot, though. Trust me. I gave y'all a lot. A lot I gave y'all. Because just what, what, I, what I told you, it's still going to be good. But <clears throat> it ain't going to be my mama's recipe. It ain't going to be my recipe, you dig? So I can't tell y'all everything. Everybody got to put their own spin on it. It's just like frying chicken. Somebody can tell you how to fry chicken. They can say, look, you get your chicken, you select your, your, your chicken cuts you want to use, uh, you know, and then they can tell you to season the meat. You know what I'm saying? Then they tell you to uh, put in some flour and, and, and heat your grease up and cook, right? Now, that's the basis of frying chicken. However, other people's chicken taste different because some people season the flour, Depending on what they season it with. Some people use egg to uh, uh, dip the chicken in to uh, uh, hold on to more of the crust and shit like that. Some people uh, use mustard, you know, different types of mustard to give it that extra little bite. You know what I'm saying? And that shit good in the motherfucker. Some people use buttermilk. You know what I'm saying? It's all different types of ways to fry chicken. Can't give you the whole game now. KO for Miles in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie says. Seen a dude uh, deep fry a steak and popcorn butter. Fire, huh? Shit, I ain't, damn, I ain't thought of that. Shit, probably good, though. Bet you that shit good. Sound like somebody has sent the cash out, but I don't see it. Let me see here. Um, Gerald Johnson in the cash app showing love. Much love, much appreciation. He said, I lost everything, still alive, suicidal thoughts. But, brother, don't be having suicidal thoughts, homie. And I think you should sign up to my Patreon, brother. I think that's the best place for you to sign up to my Patreon. Um, and then send me an email on what you're going through. And I do my best to give you my advice on the situation. But, um, yeah, you know, we don't want to uh, rock the boat on that topic right here today. On this show, brother. But sign up to the Patreon. That's what it's for. 
topics just like that, brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Let's go ahead and cook. So over the weekend, we had uh, Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora, a fight no one asked for, a fight no one cared about. You know what I'm saying? What's happening, new Fat Boy Fitness? I see you in the building, homie. Smash the like button, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? So he fought Derek Chisora. And uh, an interesting fight. He just pretty much just beat the shit out of Derek Chisora. Uh, no resistance at all from Derek Chisora. Derek couldn't hit him. He couldn't land on Tyson Fury. He's swinging for the fences, and Fury's just picking him apart. Fury's landing um, heavy shots on him. You know, it looked very suspect to me. Tyson Fury's newfound power just looks very suspect to me, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk about that at a later date if we can. Gerald Johnson back in the cash app. Salute, homie. He says, thank you for the support. Yes, sir, brother. Sign up to that Patreon, homie. And uh, we can we can chop it up. For sure. Um, so, Derek Chisora's face after the fight is disfigured. What's up, my brother Willie Lowe? I see you in the building family. Salute to the bomb squad in the building. Chisora's face is disfigured and all fucked up, you know what I'm saying? You know, after the fight, you know, he, he kissing Tyson Fury ass and telling him how, thank you for, for the opportunity, you're so great, and all this weird shit, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> Tyson Fury, um, after the fight, in the post-fight interview, Guess who was in the crowd? Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk was there. What's up, my brother Drew Titan in the building? What it do, Drew? Usyk showed up to Fury's fight, but not Deontay Wilder's fight. What's up, Mr. Sheldon? <clears throat> now, Usyk claimed he was going to show up to the Wilder fight. Remember, he called out Deontay Wilder. He said he was going to come to the Wilder versus Lanius fight, be in attendance and all that shit. And, and then he reneged because he's a bitch. Alexander Usyk is a, is a bitch. Uh, you can't say you're going to do some shit like that. You can't call somebody out as a fighter and then renege and, and everybody puts to forgive you and act like nothing ever happened. Fuck that. No, I'm not doing it. So he shows up to the Fury fight, though. He gets up there on the on the uh, apron, and Fury commits the dog in him. Fury called that boy an ugly little man. He says, you ugly little man. You rabbit, you ugly little man. You know, he's shitting all over Usyk, you know what I'm saying? Right to his face. And then here come thirsty-ass Joe Joyce. Come trying to fuck up an undisputed matchup. Thirsty-ass Joe Joyce, hop on the apron. What about me? Hey, Fury, what about me too? You know, and then Fury commits to talking shit to Joe Joyce, and you can get it too and all that kind of shit, you know, whatever. Uh, but Tyson, this, the reason for this video is something that Tyson Fury said. Um, he says that he believes Deontay Wilder knocks out every heavyweight besides him, he says. Um, he don't believe there's a heavyweight alive that can take the punching power of Deontay Wilder. Fury says that he'll bet a million dollars to anybody who will take the bet that Wilder knocks out Anthony Joshua, right? I haven't heard people talking about this. That's a, a pretty um, heavy statement there. I believe as well that Deontay Wilder knocks out Anthony Joshua. I've always believed that, and I think Eddie Hearn believes that. I think Barry Hearn believes that, and I think that's why they kept Joshua away from Deontay Wilder. They played this keep-away game, this weird little game that they was playing, uh, and it ended up backfiring with Joshua losing to guys that he should have beaten, quite frankly. He lost to uh, Andy Ruiz Jr., who's a good fighter. Andy Ruiz is a good fighter. But Joshua wasn't uh, prepped properly for Andy Ruiz. He gets he get, he get, uh, toe-tagged by Ruiz, and then um, he loses to Usyk, another little guy in Usyk. All right? 
He lost to Usyk twice. So, mind you, before he fought Usyk in the rematch, Eddie Hearn was reaching out to Team Wilder, talking about setting up the Joshua fight next. <clears throat> Wilder ignored him. He said, "Man, get out of here. Do you know? Oh, you know him from the fight, fucking uh, um, Robert Hellenius. I ain't got time to get my mind all fucked up dealing with y'all bullshit right now. And you know damn well AJ from the fight Usyk. So why are you trying to lock me into a fight when we don't even know the outcome of AJ versus Usyk? We don't know if AJ stock is still going to be the same." So why would I lock myself into a fight with Usyk when we were AJ now and he getting more money than he's supposed to be getting? See what I'm saying? That type of shit. So anyway, after the fight, Wilder beats Hellenius in one round and AJ loses to Usyk on points. Team Wilder reaches out to Eddie Hearn and says, all right. Let's, now we can talk. What do you want to do? Now all of a sudden, they've gone quiet. Now all of a sudden, Eddie Hearn is saying that AJ wants a tune-up fight. All right? AJ wants a tune-up fight um, before he fights the likes of Wilder and fucking, um, you know, the big-name guys. Like, I don't know why they keep stalling this fucking fight. How much time do you think these guys have? Seriously. Everybody's getting older. They're taking punishment. Joshua has shown you he's capable of losing to random guys. What? Like, I even heard the name Otto B. Wilder. They they actually considering AJ versus Otto B. Wilder. That's a stupid ass fight. Otto B. Wilder is gonna beat the shit out of AJ. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but it's a it's a it's a high chance. Why are they no sucker? So what the fuck are you just... You, how long do you think you can just keep avoiding the Wilder fight? Why not get the fucking money now, man? What are y'all doing? You think AJ just gonna go in here and walk through Otto B. Wilder? We don't know that. This is ridiculous. Eddie Hearn is a horrible matchmaker. Fucking horrible matchmaker. I don't know how this guy got to, I mean, I do know how he got to where he is. This is privilege, his father, you know what I'm saying? But I don't be wilding. He was beating the shit out of Tyson Fury. He got an awkward style. He throw a lot of punches. This is crazy. If they, if AJ get his ass up in there, I'll be wilding. <laughs> I'm putting money on Wild. I'm telling you that right now. What's up, my brother Supreme Beast? Boxing Talk, Cadillac Red. Happy birthday, G. Happy birthday, homie. I'm going to pull up on you today when you go uh, when you go live today. I got to pick up my babies. So you still, you still be live by the time I get back to the house. I'm going to pull up on you. So I just think it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that uh, Eddie Hearn is this fearful of Deontay Wilder fighting AJ. Like, dude, you're denying this boy. You're denying Anthony Joshua the opportunity for greatness. Right? I believe Wilder's going to win. Right? I believe Wilder knocks out AJ. But at least AJ gets dumb paid. He get crazy paid. But what if AJ somehow wins the fight? Then what? You just never know. But why why is uh <clears throat> why is Eddie Hearn this frightened of this fucking fight? He the fight has gotten so big <clears throat> that the man does not it's too big for him. He don't he can't he don't want to lose. He'll lose to anybody but Wilder. Joe Green in the cash absolute homie. He says AJ needs a confidence builder before Wilder. <clears throat> well, that's bullshit though. That's what they say. But what 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 conf- nothing's gonna prepare you for Wilder. So let's say they put you in with some rinky dink guy and you knock him the fuck out in a couple rounds. 
like you still gonna have to face Deontay Wilder if you got any plans on fighting him. You face Deontay Wilder, nothing's gonna prepare you for that. So the mo- even when you sign to fight Wilder, and you gotta face Wilder for the first time in your life, you gotta be in a press conference with Wilder. Because mind you, Anthony Joshua has never been face to face and did a stare down with Deontay Wilder. He's never done it with Tyson Fury, right? AJ is just, he just, they they keep this guy away from anything that can expose his pussy. So now, when he has to look at Deontay Wilder in the face, psh, no. It ain't going to work, bro. He's going he gonna to be intimidated. He's going to be shook. I wouldn't be surprised if AJ pulled out the fight with some fake-ass injury. You know, AJ got hurt in sparring and, oh, he's just, he twisted his knee or his ankle or, you know, his hand is broke. It, it could be any, all kind of fuck shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't put it back. Remember, years ago, when Wilder, uh, when, when no, when when it was uh, Sky Sports, Sky Sports wanted Deontay Wilder to come over and um, be involved with the Wilder, excuse me, with the AJ versus uh, uh, Klitschko fight, right? And Wilder came over and he was he was there commentating for the AJ versus Klitschko fight. And AJ ignored Deontay Wilder like he wasn't even there. You got another heavyweight champion in the building. You act like he, you don't even acknowledge him. Scary like a motherfucker, right? Another time, Sky Sports wanted Deontay Wilder to come over for one of AJ fights. I forgot who AJ was supposed to be fighting. But Wilder agreed to come over. But he said, like, if I come over this time, y'all ain't finna do me how y'all did me last time. Y'all ain't finna have me just doing commentating and not get ignored and shit the whole fucking fight. So, like, I got to be able to get in the ring after the fight and challenge Anthony Joshua. Sky Sports said, cool, I'm, we, we, we with that. What did, what did uh, AJ say? AJ said, no way. No way. I don't want this guy coming over here, getting in my face, and uh, blah, blah, blah. The fight's not signed. Why is he coming over here trying to get in my face? And then Eddie Hearn came out defending AJ. Oh, no, we don't need uh, uh, Wilder coming over here and, getting in Joshua's face, you know, they such scary motherfuckers, man. So fucking scary, bro. This is sad. Smash the like button, y'all. We should have 500 likes in the building. If you're in the building, you ain't hit the like button. We need 500 likes in the building, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, uh, 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 LB, the homie LB in the building? So this is, this is, what's up, Kendall Loco? Ancestral Rage was happening with it. This is the fuck shit we've been dealing with for years when it comes to Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn. So, Fury is of the belief, like myself, that Wilder knocks AJ Smooth the fuck out, and I believe that too. Shea Girl 85 said, didn't they threaten to call the police on Wilder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the part that everybody always forget. Anthony Joshua literally said that he's going to have police security if Wilder tries to get in the ring. And and people just let this go like, what the fuck? Are y'all serious? This is a fighter. This is the heavyweight champion of the world. What kind of scary shit? And people just, you know, whatever, man. Motherfucker just ignore shit if they like a motherfucker, I guess. I don't know. That shit's unbelievable to me. Hold on one second, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, so AJ said all kind of bullshit like that. Weird, weird, scary shit, you know. And then they'll hang their hat on shit like, oh, uh, AJ, Wilder could have fought AJ. AJ offered Wilder to fight, but Wilder didn't want to fight. Complete horse shit. Complete horse shit. <clears throat> you know, but I ain't got to go down that road again. We already explained this a million times, what happened between AJ and Wilder and all the negotiations we were here for the whole thing. We followed the whole thing. We, we, you know, we did everything we could to try to push that fight, make the fight. But, you know, pussy is pussy. General Africa in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation. Homie says, uh, Fury just said in an interview he met uh, his wife when he was 18 and she was 15. That means if they were sexually active, he could be prosecuted. Hashtag me too. 
Yeah, but he's a white man. That's not interesting to, to them. You know, uh, Elvis Presley, all that shit, you know, he, you know, nobody cares when you're a white man doing shit like that. You got to be black in order to spark outrage, you know, because black love don't exist, you know. Black man can't be 18, 19 and fall in love with a girl that's 15, 16. Can't happen. You're, you're a predator. You're a savage. All that kind of shit. White man, oh, how, how is Romeo and Juliet? How beautiful is it? Oh, my God. So romantic. You know, that's how they, that's how they, that's what they do. You know? We, we know how Fury get down. Uh, uh, Black Superman in the Super Chat coming through with the five-piece chicken nugget. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, Wilder knocks everyone out, including Fury. He did it in the first and third fight. Uh, we can't forget he KO AJ in six or less. Yeah, I think he, I think he knocks out AJ in, in um, and what's in the first three rounds? You know what I'm saying? It might even be the first round. I just think when AJ get hit flush, he gonna fold. I think as soon as he get hit flush, it's gonna be too much pressure for him. He gonna fold under the lights. He gonna lay down. He gonna get, he gonna be too scared to get back up. That's what I think. Either he get knocked out cold, or he's gonna be too scared to get back up. You know what I mean? Steve Winnell to Mizak in the super chat showing love, much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, been busy at work, but I'm but be in here. Yes, sir. Salute to my brother Steve Winnell to Mac. Appreciate you coming through, fam. Y'all smash the like button. We need over 500 likes in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Over 500. Because see, it be people watching the show, they don't like me. At least they claim they don't like me. They claim they hate me, and I'm this, I'm that, and I need to lose weight, and I drink too much, I smoke too much. I, all this old weird ass shit that they shouldn't even be concerned about. These are things that my, my bitch should be concerned about. But these grown men that's concerned about these things because... They want me to be, you know, attractive for them. See what I'm saying? They want me to lose a few pounds, get a six-pack, show it off so they can jack off and shit with their creepy, weird asses. You know what I'm saying? Every time I post any picture in my community, anything, a good time back in the day or whatever, here they come. Huh, brother, you need to take your health more seriously. Hey, man. Hey, man, shut the fuck up, creeps. Just a bunch of fucking weird ass homosexual dudes, and they they and they let this shit come out their mouth. They don't care. They they, they do not care, bro. They weirdos. Anthony in the super chat, much love, much appreciation. He says, "P seventy eight. These European countries and in India condone that type of underage activity. Yeah, they do. They condone it everywhere, except except for when it's a black person doing it." See, they'll tell you about surviving R. Kelly and all this weird ass shit. <clears throat> but then you point out white folks that are doing the same shit. You go hear nothing. Look at look at Balenciaga, what they're doing right now. Look at what Balenciaga, the fashion line, is doing right now. And uh they ain't said shit about it. You know, where are all these celebrities at? Why are you not boycotting Balenciaga? See, it was more, it was more of a controversy when Gucci did that racist shit than it is about this uh, weird stuff that Balenciaga doing. They ain't talking about it. Look at this guy here. This guy. This guy, bro. It's a reason why you go live and never show your face. You're like four hundred pounds. Bro, I got 400 pounds of pressure for your bitch and your sister's mouth. How about that? Let's say I was 400 pounds. Let's say I was. What the fuck does that matter for you? Melvin? Nigga named Melvin. What the fuck does that matter to you? I want you to explain that to the, to the people. Don't block him. I want him to explain because he's not a member of the LDBC. He's not a fan of my channel, but he's here listening. You see how I catch him? All you got to see, I know how to draw them out. I know how to expose the homosexuals. Now, explain to me, Melvin, how me being 400 pounds, if I was, how does that matter to you? 
How does that affect your life at all? Right? And if I'm 400 pounds, why the fuck do you want me on camera? All in the camera? Melvin, explain it to me. Make it make sense. We know what it is. You a fucking creep. All you niggas that's secretly watching my shit right now, but not commenting, looking for some shit to uh, talk about on your whack-ass channels, you niggas is creeps. Straight weirdos lurking around corners and shit. Hell, man, he he big, man. He 400 pounds. I don't know how he be getting all these bitches and shit. That's some bullshit, man. He must be, I don't know how he getting these bitches, bro. Worrying about me and shit, your weird, creepy ass. Fuck up out of here, Melvin. The Village Brother in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, uh, Roman Pol- Polanski, let, let me stop. It's a lot of them, bro. It's a lot of them that do fucked up shit like this. My brother, Corey McGroin, in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. This is macaroni and cheese sandwich. Yeah, see, that's too much. I can't do the mac and cheese sandwich. That's doing too much. Black Superman back in that super chat. Salute to the homie coming through with the five-piece chicken nugget. He says, when the general says, look at this guy here, somebody about to get cooked. <laughs> Extra crispy, you dig? You dig? Yeah, I, bro, I know they be in here, bro. I, I know how to bring them out. They always telling me so. You know what I'm saying? All I gotta do is expose their homosexuality, they come right out. Oh, well, first of all, fuck you, man. You got a big belly. Hey, fuck you, man. You know, this weird ass shit that men shouldn't even give a fuck about. Uh a condo, LDBC or nothing in the super chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. It says Melvin mad because his mama got a train ran on her. By the whole neighborhood. Melvin mad because he don't know who his daddy is. You know what I'm saying? It's a high probability that I could be his daddy. You know what I'm saying? It's a pro- it's a high probability. You know what I'm saying? I could be his daddy. Niggas like Melvin be mad at me because when I speak with authority and people respect me and I give game to a lot of the homies, guys like Melvin, they resistant to the game because... They don't feel like no man can tell them nothing because their daddy wasn't there for them, so they mad and bitter at black men. You know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck that shit, nigga. They can't tell me nothing, nigga. I'm my own man. I'm a nigga. I'm grown ass man. They can't tell me nothing, man. Nigga, I'm my mama. You know what I'm It's always on your mama, nigga. Fuck your mama. Your mama's a bitch. Your mama's a dick sucking ass bitch, nigga. Fuck your mama. Nigga, I always put something on their mama. Nigga, what about your daddy? You ain't never heard a nigga say, oh, my daddy. You know why? Because you ain't got no motherfucking daddy, nigga. That's why. I did, though. I got a daddy. You niggas putting everything on your mama because that's who raised you. Pussy-ass niggas. Edward Hogan. In the Super Chat, showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. <clears throat> he said, Joe Joyce, KO's both, Joshua and Wilder now. Well, I'd love to see the fight. Hope they make it. Hope they make it. And then I want you to tune back in so we can uh, put a little wager down there, brother. Chuck the Wise in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, shout out to the general. Hashtag LDBC for life. Appreciate the love coming through with the 10-piece chicken nugget. Chuck the Wise. Salute, homie. My brother, General Africa, in that Super Chat salute, homie, he says, Melvin was raised by an alpha female. Nah, I ain't even going to give her that. She, she's a dick-sucking bitch. That's what he, she was. She wasn't no alpha female. Alpha females don't raise niggas like Melvin. He was raised by a dick-sucking-ass bitch. And that's why he over here worrying about how much a nigga weigh and why a nigga ain't on camera. Cause he want to size me up. He want to. He want to have some visuals to jack off to. Cause the pictures and got too boring for him. Remember back in the eighties, <clears throat> we used to look at Playboy magazines and jack off. Then it got boring and shit. Playboy and Hustler. We needed the real thing. You see what I'm saying? So that's what he need. Melvin need the real thing. He need to see the. Vi- he want to see my facial expressions. He want to see me when I move around and turn my head to a certain angle. He need that 
that visualization for him to get that good jerk. These niggas are creeps. I ain't lying. What, look, what, what's the other explanation for this grown ass man coming over here, wanting to see me on camera, talking about how much I weigh and shit? Ain't like I'm hiding. I post pictures of myself. I've done plenty of videos on camera. So what is? The, why does this nigga need to see me every day on camera? See what I'm saying? See, I'm one of the rare few who don't have to get on camera to get video viewed. One of the rare few. A lot of niggas is under the impression that people want to see them on camera, and, they, and, and people don't. You know? See, I'm capable of listening to a man speak, listening to a woman speak, and hearing they... No, I ain't gonna lie. I do be wanting to see the ladies, though. You know? So I ain't gonna lie about that, but as far as the brothers, I'm capable of listening to a man speak, hearing his opinions about something, and, and taking that with me. Either I agree or disagree with him. I don't give a fuck how this nigga look. I don't care. But, but it's a lot of weirdos out here. They need to know because they need to size you up. They want to see if you better than them or they want to compare themselves to you and all this weird shit. Now let me pour me a drink. And they got me drinking. That's right. 1738. Hey. It's that shit here. I want you to be mine again, baby. Hey, doing my lifestyle is driving you crazy. You know I'm gonna stop without you. Looking ass nigga. Got my way up to you. Got my way up to you. All right. But anyway, it's a lot of weirdos out here. Y'all see them every day. These niggas are, are form fuckboy coalitions and have panels and they be all together talking about niggas who ain't thinking about them. You know what I'm saying? Talking about how niggas look. Talking about all kind of weird ass shit and people. But I like that kind of shit because, you know, a piece of shit always attract flies. You know? So you want to know how many flies is in your area? Just, you know, let that piece of dog shit sit in the yard for a little bit. And you'll see all kind of fucking shit just flies and everybody just coming out the woodworks. That's what you need. That's who you expose your friends and your foes. You dig? Let's see here. Jay Miller in the super chat showing love coming through with the two-piece chicken nugget. He said Melvin probably loves P Valley and Bravo shows. Yeah, I've been hearing about that P Valley, but I ain't never watch it. Um First, this girl told me I should watch it. It's about the strip club life and shit. But I never got a chance to watch it the first season. And then uh, another girl told me, no, nah, you ain't going to like that shit because they doing some weird shit up in there. So I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I ain't fucking with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fuck nigga coalition boxing alliance. Yeah. Mm hmm. Fuck nigga coalition boxing alliance. That's what they do. <clears throat> I just ain't got it in me to talk about niggas who, who ain't thinking about me. Like, if a nigga ain't talking about me, ain't thinking about me, I, I don't think about that nigga. Bro, it be holidays. <clears throat> Thanksgiving. Now, Christmas finna come up. You watch what I tell you. Remember, I told you this. Remember. When the when Christmas come up, that whole Christmas, New Year's stretch, when everybody is is you know, finna be having the most wonderful time of the year type shit, right? It's gonna be some miserable motherfucking people out here, and them niggas gonna be doing diss videos, trying to fuck up people's holidays. They gonna be doing all kind of shit, bro, because they mad. That they ain't got nobody to share their love with, fam. I'm telling you, I know this shit. People be miserable, bro. Both of be sad. Motherfucker be sad in the bitch, bro. Motherfucker just gonna be gonna be on here dissing people randomly, talking about stupid shit. You're like, what the fuck this bro? It's Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. 
it's the day after Christmas. Damn, you ain't got shit else to do. Why ain't you with your family? Why ain't you with your your girl? Or, you know, why ain't you celebrating Kwanzaa or some shit? These niggas be, I'm telling you, every holiday, I've been on YouTube since 2006. 2007, I think. No, 2006. I got out of jail in 2006. And that's when I first heard about YouTube. So I came on this motherfucker. And I've been on here for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Talking about different shit. And let me tell you something. I know this motherfucker like the back of my hand. I know miserable fucking people. Bro, they always here lurking. Look, how many likes we got now, right? We've been cooking. We have 500 people in here almost the whole show. I bet you I ain't got 500 likes. Know why? Because there's some creepy ass niggas up in here listening <clears throat> who really don't fuck with us. They don't fuck with me. I don't even know why they're here. Like, what's the point of you being here? Like, why torture yourself? You know I'm not going to change who I am. I'm going to do the same shit. So you just torturing yourself by being here. What's the point? Shout out to my real Africans out there in the Super Chat. Showing love. Much love. Much appreciation. He says, the return of Mr. 1738A. Yes, sir. He said, uh, salute, family. Salute, brother. Uh, Stephen L. Mizak in the super chat showing love. He said, P Valley and and uh, four. He said, he said, P Valley and four hashtag uh, rat pack. I think he meant to say FP Valley, I think. Salute to the homie Stephen L. Mizak. Anna Israel in the super chat. Appreciate the love, fam. Coming through with the five piece chicken nugget. He said, just uh, putting something in the chat to cause because it, it'd be listening, uh, but ain't no. Creeper, man, you know how these, you know how these guys is. I know you ain't no creeper, homie. What's up, my brother? Uh, drink more water in the building. Yeah, these people crazy, bro. But they, but the good part about them though is they, like I said, like a piece of shit. They attract other fuck niggas to them, so then you get a chance to see who all the fuck niggas are, and you can act accordingly. You know what I'm saying? You can move accordingly once you know who all the fuck niggas are. So that's the good thing about them. But yeah, it's, it's some weirdos, man. Straight weirdos. Creeps. I had one nigga uh, yesterday sending me hella five messages. Uh, uh, I'm like, what the fuck this nigga sending me messages for? I don't fuck with dude. He don't fuck with me. So why are you messaging me? He didn't hit me up saying, hey, bro, I don't like you. I'm going to fuck you up. This is my address. This is my location. Meet me here. I'll fuck you up. I ain't never got no message like that. There's always some weird shit like nigga want to have an internet beef. Nigga want to have an internet argument, you know, because he want to play some little clout game and shit. I'm not playing with you like that. You know what I'm saying? Truly chosen, for, uh, 45 in the Super Chat, showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. Says salute, General, salute. Appreciate the support. It's funny because they always try to project they, they own fuck shit off on us, you know. They some, they some homosexuals, but they'll try to flip it on us. Like, <laughs> we over here minding our business. We got our own community. We done broke away from all the fuck shit. We over here minding our own business, talking about sports and whatever else we talk about. These creeps eavesdrop on us and then talk about us. And then talk about us. As if we bothering them. As if uh, our channels are forced down their throat or some shit. They don't got to watch us. You know what I'm saying? But they watch us, knowing who we are, knowing that they don't agree with us. And they let their jealousy and homosexuality take over. And before you know it, you know, they're exposing their pussies. You know what I'm saying? What's happening, Tay? The homie Tay Jones in the building. What it do? What's up, Coach? Coach Sheldon Harrison in the building. Woke in the building. Woke said these niggas ain't got no life. No, they don't. But that's what happened, though, when you sit in the house all the time. You know, you don't never go nowhere. You don't never travel. You don't never explore the world and shit like that. You start living through other people. You start worrying about who Kanye West fucking and who, Con who Kim Kardashian fucking and who Scottie Pippen White fucking. You start worrying about all that stupid shit that ain't got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened when you sit your ass in the house all day. 
You become a fucking geek, fucking nerd. You know what I'm saying? Overnight, it can happen. You dig? Get the likes up, ladies and gentlemen. We should have over 500 likes in the building. Joe Johnson says, Zab Judah lost to Floyd coming off of a loss. <clears throat> no confidence. Well, I disagree, bro. I think Zab had plenty of confidence going to know Floyd. I think Floyd just broke him down systematically. I thought Zab fought very well the first four or five rounds, and then Floyd just uh, got to wearing him down, breaking him down, you know. Zab got desperate and shit. But, you know. Either way, ain't nothing going to save Anthony Joshua from, from the wrath of Deontay Wilder. Nothing. Nothing going to save Joshua from the wrath. He's going to get his ass whooped. Hold on one second, y'all. All right. Robert Singleton in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, not to go off topic, he says, uh, not to go off topic, General, but Boots fighting some dude uh, from who gives uh, from who gives a fucking stand on the uh, uh, Tank Cold main event. Dudes want no smoke with Boots. No, they don't. But Boots got to wait his turn. That's just part of the game. He got to wait his turn. I know it's frustrating and shit, but, you know. The guys who Boots really should be fighting is the up-and-coming guys. Uh, he should be fighting <clears throat> the Virgil Ortiz's of the world, but it's not enough people calling for that fight. Everybody's so fixated on fights that we know ain't going to happen, like Boots versus Spence. We know that's not going to happen. We know Boots versus uh, Crawford not going to happen. But these other guys, they can get the smoke, but nobody pushing for them. Uh, Gerald Johnson, back in the cash app. Appreciate the love, fam. He says, salute to Dion for the contribution to Jackson State. To Jackson, yeah. Salute to Dion Sanders. Man, I heard he got a new job in Colorado. So I know some people's mad at him, I guess, because he left uh, Jackson State. But, I mean, niggas are always going to tell another motherfucker what they should be doing, but they can't fix their own life. It's remarkable, you know. Nigga, nigga ain't talked to they, they fucking brother, they blood brother in, in, in 10 years over an argument 10 Thanksgivings ago, you know. Nigga, nigga's too scared to call their fucking daughter, grown-ass daughter, because you, you were afraid to say I'm sorry for not being there for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nigga can tell Dion what the fuck he need to be doing and what, what kind of life choices he should be making. Well, niggas is remarkable. Niggas is fucking remarkable, fam. Oh no, Dion sold out. He he. Oh oh, why you going to the to the white school? Why he man? Shut the fuck up, man. Where the fuck do you niggas work at? Cause the way you niggas be talking, I, I'm you niggas got to work for a black owned business. You got to you got to work for a black owned business the way you niggas. Cause on the internet, everybody is is soul brother number one. Niggas is the mighty black panther on this internet. Everybody is Malcolm Farrakhan. Every motherfucking body. It, like I, I just gotta see where you niggas work at, for real. And this go back to what I was talking about. Niggas are always trying to live through another motherfucker. You want somebody else to do all the shit you supposed to be doing. If you feel like Dion should sacrifice all his money and continue to buy supplies and all this shit for that for that school, and, and, and ain't no money coming in there, he should continue to do that. Even though he brought all this attention and, and recruits there, he should continue to do that and sacrifice his wealth and his family, then what are you willing to sacrifice? You niggas can't even stop talking about Russell Westbrook on YouTube, hating on this nigga because you're afraid you're going to lose AdSense revenue. You know what I'm saying? You throw black people under the bus every goddamn day on this YouTube to make AdSense revenue. You know what I'm saying? I used to shit on LeBron James like that. See, I got a lot of different... I got a little opinions about LeBron James. He got on my nerves sometimes about certain shit he do, how the media treat him. But I did a video one time, and off of one video of LeBron James, off of that one video, 
I made thirty five hundred dollars off that one video shitting on LeBron. I never did it again. Most niggas would have got that money and be like, oh shit, I'm finna shit on LeBron every goddamn day. But when I got that money, I felt dirty. I felt dirty. I talk a lot of real shit on this YouTube. And I ain't never got paid like that from one video before. But y'all paid me like that for shitting on LeBron? Nah. I don't, I don't want that money. Yeah, I didn't feel right. I felt like the biggest jigaboo in the world. I think I took that video down, too. My Adrian Broner videos, I took I took them old motherfuckers down, too. Most of them I can find. Nice shit on AB, I took them shits down. Fuck all that shit, bro. I'm done with that shit. Done with all that fuck shit. What's up, Jared Green? Salute to the homie. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, at the end of the day, shout out to Deion Sanders. I ain't mad at Deion, man. He did what he was supposed to do. He went over there. He got the attention back on that school and uh, brought some attention to them. And they couldn't, they couldn't keep him. They couldn't afford to keep him or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? He, he made a move for what was best for him and his family. I ain't hear Dion come out and throw no black folks under the bus or, you know, it ain't like he came out saying, I'm tired of working with little niggas. I want to work with white folks. I ain't hear him say no shit like that. The fuck is the problem? Corey McGrowan in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, people, I'm, uh, I'm Mississippi mad at Dion. People in Mississippi mad at Dion more than Brett Favre for, for leaving, more than Brett stealing. Oh, yeah. That's how I know it's all fuck shit, bro. Brett Favre out there stealing from the poor. Stealing from the fucking poor people in Mississippi. Literally stealing millions. Deion Sanders took a job. He took a job opportunity. And motherfuckers is cooking Deion. But but some of these motherfuckers ain't cook, ain't cook Brett Favre one time. Not a one time. Ain't cook Brett. You know what the excuse is? Well, we don't care about Brett Fire. Well, we don't care, but fuck you. You should care. Why don't you care? You know what I'm saying? Let me see here. What's happening with uh, Mr. Sheldon? Mr. Sheldon said, not this dude from Mississippi. That's right. Yeah, shade girl, it felt like dirty money. I ain't like that shit. Cause I done dropped some bars on this YouTube shit. And in one video I ain't never gave me thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but when I made that shit, I said, mm, nah, I don't like this. Cause see, that's an enticing thing. And a lot of niggas fall victim to that. A lot of niggas uh, make a video on the humbug, hating on the LDBC or something, and then they make a couple dollars off of it. They're like, wow. I'm gonna keep shitting on the, on these black guys. This is this is where it's at, and they, they end up j- cooning and jigabooing, you know, and they become a slave to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Smash that like button, y'all. Do we got somebody let me know if we got 500 likes yet? Or do we still got a gang of hating ass niggas in here just eavesdropping and shit? Looking for video content. Uh, Drink my water. Say, y'all peep Shakur and Dev and Bill. Go at it. Y'all seen that? I seen that. Um, you know, very clever. Very clever tactic by uh, Geronte Tank Davis. Very smart. Tank Davis. Uh, <laughs> very cleverly slid out the way, you know what I'm saying, and got these two niggas arguing with each other, you know what I'm saying, very clever by Javante Tank Davis, old school man with a tactic, you know, Tank started some shit and then slid out the way, slid out the way, didn't he slide, he slid like a motherfucker, didn't he? Afro Rican G in the super chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. So have you seen Grass is Greener on Netflix? Pretty interesting documentary. 
uh, when was uh, when was your first time um, smoking ganja? First, I haven't seen the documentary. No, I haven't. Uh, but my first time smoking weed was uh, in Germany. In um, I might have been about eleven years old. Eleven. Um, I used to steal uh, cigarette butts out my father ashtray trying to be cool and, and puffing on the cigarettes and shit, choking and shit. But I had got some weed when I was in Germany. One of uh, my white homeboys had some bud uh, that they had stole. It wasn't done. It wasn't ready to be picked yet. It wasn't cured and properly and all of that. But, you know, we didn't know what we was doing. We 11, you know. We dried it out, smoked on it and shit, got a little buzz, you know. That was my first time smoking. But then... Um, when I got to New York, is when I started smoking, smoking, you know what I'm saying? Um, smoking heavy because New York was like the shit, bro. Back in the 90s, New York was the shit, dude. Like, I'm talking about for weed, everybody talk about Cali. Cali always had some fire as weed, but New York was my introduction to, to some real smoking because you had a lot of Jamaican weed spots and shit like that, and it was good, pure weed, man. It was good old fashioned outdoor weed, you know what I'm saying? Without all the chemicals and all this man-made manipulating genetics and all this fuck shit that's giving everybody schizophrenia. This is before all that shit, you know what I'm saying? This is back when motherfucking smoke weed. You can smoke one blunt. Matter of fact, you ain't have to smoke a blunt. You could be, it could be three niggas in a cypher with a, with a Dutch master or a Philly. Y'all smoking that motherfucker, y'all be high for like five, six hours. Fucked up. Fucked all the way up for five, six hours. These kids can't smoke no weed like that now. They, they, and then, and then weed back there was five dollars. You know, you get two blunts out of five dollars out of a nick. You know what I'm saying? You get like two grams for five dollars back in them days. Now, <clears throat> the motherfucking weed is so much stronger, supposedly. It smells so much better and it's so pretty and all this shit, right? But then niggas be smoking back to back. You know what I'm saying? You see how many times I done blazed up? This weed don't do shit for me, bro. It give me buzz. You know what I'm saying? It give me buzz. It don't get me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So this is some it's some weird shit they doing to this shit now. And then you got to be careful because if you got some type of underlying uh, mental issues that haven't come to the surface, you got to be real careful in your from, from the ages of like teenage years to about uh, late 20s to 30. Be careful smoking this weed, bro, because if you got some underlying mental issues, that and psychedelics and shit like that can fuck you up, you know, and it can bring out any of your uh, flaws mentally. And, and that's why you're seeing a lot more people in the last five years having these extreme um, breakdowns and stuff like that mentally because they're smoking weed, they're trying to be cool, they're doing all this other shit, and they mind they got underlying health conditions. You know what I'm saying? So weed ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You start tripping the fuck out and shit, and you know, I'm fucking lose their goddamn mind. Stephen L. the Mizak in the super chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, fam. He says, first blunt, December, um, uh, on Christmas of 2008, I was 20. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, I uh yeah, I think I smoked, you know, real good when I was like in New York and shit. When I was a teenager, I smoked real good up, up back there. You know, my favorite weed strain to this day is uh, lamb's bread. Lamb's bread. Whenever I get it, I got a homeboy that grew it. He grew a real deal, pure lamb's bread, no alterations, none of that cross strain shit. Pure Jamaican lamb's bread cannabis sativa. Known as the crime. Ain't no indica in there. It is pure cannabis sativa. He still grow that shit. And everyone and when he have his harvest, he let me know and I go fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? I go fuck with it heavy. You know. And but there's other good strands out there, but lamb's bread is still the old school shit that I fuck with, you know what I mean? Cause I can smoke lamb's bread and be high for hours. You know what I mean? 
chilling like a motherfucker. But these other strands, OG Kush, all that, even the powerful ass OG Kush when it first came out, you know what I'm saying? OG Kush, like, uh, that shit'll fuck you up instantly, right? Fuck you up, but then it don't last real long. Gorilla Glue, yeah, Gorilla Glue is the shit. Gorilla Glue is the shit, you know? But once again, you can get, you build a tolerance to that shit. It don't last as long as it's supposed to. All these new strands, shit don't last as long as it's supposed to last. You know what I mean? But you get that pure shit back in your system, get you some lamb's bread, it's going down. Some old school skunk, you know what I'm saying? Old school California orange. Woo wee. You know what I mean? Panama red, real Panama red. Now, if they got, if anybody said they got Panama red right now, they're lying. But old school, back in the '90s, you could still find Panama red. I think it's dead now. I think they crossed it up, mixed it with so much other shit. But Panama red was you talking about cannabis sativa? My goodness gracious, man! Bill, what a beautiful fucking strand of weed that was. Panama red. My goodness. Yep. That was good. These Dominican dudes used to always have it. We used to go to this Dominican spot in New York. And, um, I used to always go get a nickel bag of chunky black, a nickel bag of chocolate tie, a nickel bag of lamb's bread, and a nick of uh, Panama Red. I would go get them, you know what I'm saying, spend $20, and you got you fucking, you know what I'm saying? You got you nice. You got you a nice eight grams of bud. For 20 bucks. Fire ass bud too. And we be smoking on that shit all week. You know? Rapping the shit in the cipher. You know what I'm saying? Getting it in. Listening to Smooth the Hustler and Trigger the Gambler. You know what I'm saying? Listening to Liquid Swords and shit. We be running from the cop, busting our shots. I'm the chief from the block. And you got me locked down in this cold, cold world. Y'all know nothing about that shit. Y'all don't know nothing about that shit, man. Yeah, the 90s New York was the shit, nigga. New York was the place to be in the 90s, nigga. Fuck what you heard. That was the place to be in the 90s, nigga. You know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is. You know, the 90s were just better all around anyway. Anywhere you was at. If you was in the South, if you was in the fucking West Coast, if you was in fucking the Midwest, the 90s was just the shit, bro. Milwaukee was cool as fuck in the 90s, bro. That's back when niggas had, in in Milwaukee, niggas still had jerry curls. Perms, long ass pimp ass perms and shit. You know, niggas with Stacey Adams on and shit. Long ass fingernails, long beards and shit. You know what I'm saying? All them niggas look like, Snoop look like Snoop off Jimmy Bones and shit. That's back in the day. You know what I'm saying? That's back in the day. Times was fun back in them days, man. A lot of game banging though. A lot of game banging and wild ass crazy shit was going on, but it, it was fun, you know. And then the 2000s hit. The shit just got weird, man. The 2000s shit just seemed like it got weird. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were still gangster, but we started to see an introduction to the weird shit coming in in the 2000s. Like, a lot of clout chasing and like weird shit. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't even describe it. It just seemed like everything started shifting towards fuck shit being acceptable. You know what I'm saying? Steven of the Mizak in that super chat showing love, much love, much appreciation, homie. He said nineties is it's nineties and we had uh double dutch drill teams. Oh yeah, the girls used to be out there with the double dutch getting it. Man, I missed I missed I missed the eighties and the nineties to be honest with you, bro. I missed the eighties and the nineties bad. I miss sitting on my grandma porch watching girls out there jump rope and shit, getting it, you know what I'm saying, with them biker shorts on. You know what I'm saying? I miss I miss my uncle coming out coming outside 
handing me uh three dollars and saying, "Hey, boy, walk to the corner store and give me a pack of Winston's." And getting you keep the change and get what you want. I miss them days. You know what I'm saying? It was just it just seemed like it was more love, man, from black people. See, I know it was still crazy shit going on. Niggas was selling dope. Niggas was gang banging. Niggas was doing all. It just seemed like it was more love, though. You know what I'm saying? Amongst black people, you know, how we treated each other and shit, you know? At least that's how it seemed to me, you know? But I was a young nigga. Maybe I'm wrong, you know? Tim TV 212 in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation. Homie says, thanks for the New York love, 78. I thought you hated NY. Shit. You know, I don't hate New York. I lived out there. New York was my, I had some of my best years in New York. You know what I'm saying? That's in my best years in New York. Afro Weekend G in the Super Chat showing love. Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, I didn't know jazz musicians back in the day were really into weed like that. <clears throat> really interesting documentary. Man, yeah, we, man, motherfuckers, a lot of people smoke weed, bro. Weed was the shit. Weed was the shit, Nick. The lovely brown sugar Tay Tay in the super chat. Salute, little beautiful. She says, and candy was candy back in the days. <laughs> and you know this. Tay Tay, you remember uh Laffy Taffy's? You remember uh not the long Laffy Taffy's they got now, but remember when they used to it used to be them fat square Laffy Taffy's? My god. Them fat ass square Laffy Taffy's, I used to fuck them up. You know, they used to be a nickel apiece. And big fat motherfuckers. You go up in the corner store. I think in, in New York, y'all call them bodegas and shit. But everywhere else, we call them corner stores and shit. But we go to the corner store, and we go up in that motherfucker, and I get, you might have a dollar, right? And with a dollar, you know, you learn how to do math early. So you learn as a kid with a dollar, you got 25, uh, you, you, got, you got 20 pieces of candy you can get. It's five cents. You know, you learn that early. You know what I'm saying? So I go get me some Reese's Pieces. I get me some Reese's Cups. I get me a, a bag of those goddamn um, sour cherries. Little sour cherries. Get some them shits. Give me some fat ass motherfucking Life of Taffies. Go back to my grandma house and we be fucking them up. Chico sticks. My God. Chico sticks, Boston baked beans. I remember when a box of Chico, I'm a box of Boston baked beans and a box of lemon heads for five cents. I remember all that shit. I remember when it went to 10 cents. You know what I'm saying? I remember when you can get, go get you an oatmeal cream pie, a star crunch, all them little shits was five cents a piece. I remember when they changed the price to 10 cents. I remember when they went to 15 cents. And I definitely remember when they went to 25 cents. Bro. A few years ago, I had this like nostalgic moment, right? Where I was in the hood, fucking with my cousin and them, and um, we went to the corner store. And I started seeing all this candy I grew up on, right? And I just, I fucked up in my mind. I'm thinking, like, you know, I'm back in the 80s, right? So <laughs> I grabbed like these little, uh, little bags of chips and shit, and I'm picking up all this stuff. And that motherfucker told me the price. I'm like, wait, how? And he was like, I said, well, how much is the chips? Because in my mind, the chips is 25 cents a piece. He's like, the chips are a dollar. A dollar? I said, they're not 25 cents. He said, hey, man, did you just get out of jail, man? You just got out of prison for a long time or something, man? He said, they've been a dollar for a while, man. I said, what the fuck, bro? This little ass bag is fucking a dollar. This is this shit supposed to be a quarter. But whatever. You know, it is what it is. Whatever. But anyway, man, I think KQKC should be on by now. Let me see. Let me see if the homie's on. Uh, let's see. If the homie's on. Yeah, he on. All right, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here, man. Uh, thank y'all for joining me. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Much love to the chat. Super chat. And everybody came through showing love today. Catch y'all on the trail, man. I'm about to hit old deuces.